fine. You can put a chat message or something like that. But this session is mostly for you. So don't shy. Don't uh, don't hold yourself. Ask questions as I'm running. This will be mostly a hands-on session, so I'll be doing things on the screen. So if you have questions, want to point out stuff, please feel free to stop at any point of time. Um, or stop me at any point of time. So cool. So today we are going to look at quick and easy AI solutions using Power Platform, and we'll try to do it in an hour. Um, hopefully we can get it done in an hour. There are so many stuff we'll be touching. So before we start, a little bit about myself. Um, I have been in the industry, I think just a little bit out there, 15 years or more. I'm a tech lover and enthusiast, a lot of uh, interest around AI, building integrated solution in Azure, Office 365, security, uh, and you know Power Platform as part of it. So building a lot of cross-bit solutions across technologies and businesses, uh, that keeps me really you know pumped up all the time. And uh, yeah, so that's that's what I normally do. And uh, one thing I always say in my sessions and you know to my people who I know is you always dream it, believe it, and then finally build it. If you cannot build it, find someone to build it for you. So, but do the do the first two things, obviously. Cool. Um, so, so what are we going to look at today's session? It, today's session we are going to look at very high level at some of the AI things behind Power Platform and how they are gaining up. Uh, you know, gain traction and how easy and quick and we can build those things. But to start with, we look at some of the AI design principles. So artificial intelligence is not like magic as normally people think. There's a lot of work that goes behind it. And the people who do like us will know about it. So we have to understand what it takes and how we do it so we can understand the principles so we can build something uh, to implement it accurately. And then we look at AI in cloud platform, like how is AI? simplifying the power platform. Well, power platform is simplifying the AI process. Sorry, it's the other way around. Um, and then we have the builder categories. So we look at AI builder and what categories they have and how we can use those categories. And then finally, we'll do the build session, which which will be mostly uh, most part of our session today. So cool. So to start with AI design principles, let's start understand uh, before I dive into the training bit. What's a model? The model is the core component of an AI. That's what defines how is the AI going to behave whenever a new data is sent to it. So your model defines, should I be looking at something? Should I be interacting or sorry, capturing any data out of uh, the information that is given to me? Analyzing it, understanding what needs to be done. So it's basically like a data mapping and modeling exercise, which actually kind of defines the core of your AI. I, in one way, I say it's the brain of what AI does. So your model is really critical. You need to understand what model you are going to use, how you are planning to use it, and that's your starting point. Then the next bit is training. That's where you are actually starting to build that bridge of the model and the real data. So if you can, if you have an algorithm that tells that, uh, finds the time of the day, it's not going to know, the AI is not going to know when to use it and how to use it unless you tell the AI how and when to use it. So you are going to frame the AI and the model with data that is real real data or a simulated of the real data. Now in today's, in today's session, I have tried to uh, get as much real as I can, but I have used a lot of simulated data to frame because uh, I just don't have the numbers. So, and, and again with training, it's a lot of numbers. And then you test it. You test that you make sure that the AI is actually behaving the way you want it to behave or actually giving the output that you're thinking of. If it doesn't do that, then pretty much there is some gap and you need to train again. So this is like a cycle that you need to do. And at the same time, you have to look at implementing it. So you can actually test and train or you can go and implement and then train. So it's all possible in that cycle. So you can actually chop and change at any one point of time and start doing the process from there. But the core is the model. So you need to start working on the model first before you start doing anything else. And then once you train, test, and implement, your AI loop is complete. Cool, so let's look at uh, some of the AI in Power Platform. Now, uh, when I do the session, I will drill into more into this, so you guys can see this in working. Uh, and at that point of time, please feel to jump in and ask questions of in any points that you wanted to ask. Cool. Um, now, the thing is about AI Builder. So AI and Power Platform is three core components. One is the AI Builder, which is the 
AI component that sits in Power Platform. Then is the apps and bots, which is the conversational bit, which is Power Virtual Agents. And then the automation bit, which could be Power Automate or Power Apps, where you can automate the processes because AI is just doing the analysis and the smart part of it. You still need to do some work around making the data validated and you know doing the data entry and the data output part of it. So these are the three core components of Power Platform that work together to create the AI experience. So what are the high level steps that we'll be looking at or we need to do? First thing is you need to understand the process very thoroughly, I would say. If you don't understand the process thoroughly, you will have a hard time mimicking the intelligent part of it. And most of the times with my experience, what people do is mimic the part. And in, in one example, you'll see that I have done the same. Mimic the part that is pretty much bare, min, uh, uh, that is pretty much possible through any other app. So if you are doing a AI for a data entry form, I think it's overkill. It's not really useful to create AI for a data and perform. Yeah, I know people say that, oh, it's a board, it's a you know a conversation medium. That's all good. But then the thing is, the idea of the board is to actually gather the data that can be later used to do something smart out of it, not to just their data, not to get the data as a data capture and then store it somewhere. Because that you can do through an app. There's no sense of building an AI into the, you're just, you're just overkilling the system. So understand the process really core. See the points where AI is really beneficial for the application or the system or the process that you are trying to build. And the core of it, again, as I was talking about it, the core of it is the model and the data that you need to use to learn. Ideally, the data may vary, and in some cases, Power Platform may say 15 uh, or you know five images, or it, it, this is all fine. But ideally, if you are talking about real uh, you know, a complete model and that does have 95% accuracy, you need to have a lot of data to train your uh, AI with. Now, that doesn't mean the hundreds and thousands of data, at least 50 or 100 or something above that number will give you that confidence that, or you can train it as you are using it also. So this is a this is a cyclic process. So you keep, keep doing that. Then you pick a model. So you, you need to understand the process. You need to get the data with respect to the process so you can train your AI. Then now pick a model because there are so many models that even Power Platform gives you and we look at some of those. Uh, which one is fitting your business scenario? Which one is trying to get that smartness into your system? Then you build and train. So as I was showing you, you build and train your AI model and you train the uh, model with real data or real enough data so that it can understand what the differences are. And then finally, you publish and use it. So once you have done the four steps, you are ready to go. Cool. Um, now we will look at those steps in more detail as we are doing the build session. And at that time, happy to jump in, ask questions. Uh, but keep that in mind. Keep in the back of your, uh, you know, uh, thought process that these are the five steps that you will use. So what are the categories that are provided? Uh, in Power Platform or some of the categories that are available right now. There are more categories coming, but some of them. First is category classification, which is nothing but it means that if you give a, a bunch of text to it, it will try to put that text into a particular category. Uh, and we'll look at that example today. Um, so if I have a set of data that I'm getting, for example, I have a, you know, uh, kind of, I, I, it, it pertains to the scenario that I have, I think, but you are in a vendor shop or you are in a shop, for example, and they are getting feedback on their product. And then, um, you know, you are writing on the form what kind of feedback or your experience was in that, uh, you know, in that uh, department store or something. They will try to categorize the data into a particular faction, like particular faction of that department. Like you are in David Jones, they have a lot of different sections that, and you might have one form that you are filling and you might write that, the, uh, you know, the clause section was not good because, you know, I could not find what I was looking for. So that feedback needs to go to the clause section or the, you know the, the the that unit of the business, so they need to categorize, and that where category classification can really help. Where you are trying to categorize the data based on bunch of information that is provided to you. Then this is the most uh, you know relevant and more useful, and a lot of people get attracted to it because uh, for that is from form processing. Form processing is nothing but it is a, like a PDF form or a scan form which is available, and you want to take data out of it. So the AI can actually read the data out of it. You can do more out of it, which we'll see in today's session, but 
uh, this is the starting point where you can give a form to it and it can read the data out of it. Uh, just a note there, it can read only textual data. I was thinking earlier that it can read all sorts of data, but form processing is better with textual data. It's not actually supported any other object detection, which is supported through the object detection part of it, where you can detect an object. So if your form had a, uh, for example, a like a uh, graphic in there, and somebody has tick on that graphic, the form processing cannot recognize it. So you have to use the object detection. Where object detection is like an image classification uh, system where you can give it an image and it can classify the sections or components in that image and you know put parameters around it or metadata around it. And then finally is entity extraction. So this is basically like if you have given a bunch of uh, text to it, like you can write a whole essay and you can be mentioning your, you know, your, the location that you are going, the, the things that you are saying. For example, you sent out a feedback in TripAdvisor and you mention all the places you visited and how cool they were or how bad your experience was. The entity extraction can actually pick those components out like the places and the feedback and link them together. Uh, and the dates, uh, well, it will not take out the exact, that's another one which I have not listed on, it's called creep phase extraction, which will extract those creep experiences out of it, but entity extraction will take out the places and the dates and all those bits out of it. Um, I have not listed key phase extraction because it's kind of given and, and I thought like pretty much that's easy. Uh, so there is another bit called key phase extraction and they keep adding more and more. So this this obviously gets outdated very fast. So some of the business cases and scenarios uh, is like provide ownership back. To, to why you do use Power Platform and AI Builder is provided you want to give the uh, requirement back to your business users, don't want to spend too much technical uh, component on it, but the business recommend and flexible control for users and permissions you share. So these are the cases where AI will fit the power platform and you don't need to create a big virtual assistant or similar scenario. Um, if you want to know what are the different options available, you can check out the video which I sent in the prerequisite about where I'm talking about smart collaboration. Um, and that, that will give you some context of what are the different options and power platform is the one of the option which I say at the beginning of the journey. Some of the scenarios like financial reporting, inventory asset management, booking and planning. Uh, there are other scenarios like report uh, uh, receipt processing and all those scenarios that are there, which you can use this solution to. Cool, so how do we do it? That's the biggest question, right? We're trying to answer that today. So, so I'll jump back to my uh, uh, session, but at that, time I'll just take a quick look up any questions that are there uh, okay <laughs> okay so somebody wants to know more about TikTok um, I think that is something will come from US if they're buying that business then you'll know um, cool so to start with we look at uh, the AI builder uh, platform in power apps and at this point of time guys this is all you so I will be running through these uh, components, but if at any point of time you have any questions, have any uh, you know uh, things that you want to know, please jump in and ask those. Okay. Uh, so as I was saying earlier, we start with the model. So these are the models that are available in AI. Uh, so first, first of all, to start with, uh, uh, AI Builder is not included in your normal Power Apps uh, licensing. It is comes as separately, so you will see this thing on the top. You have to go and purchase the licensing so that you can use uh, AI. Uh, now I know somebody had asked me that question uh, about AI licensing. So if you come here down, um, these are the different options. So there are capacity add-ons. AI Build Calculator gives you an estimate uh, and uh, there is a license, yeah. There is a license management screen where you can go and check for the licenses that are valuable for production. Trial has limited capacity. Earlier it had more, so you could build a lot of stuff, but then now they are restricting, saying that people, seems like people are not going out of trial. So they are like, oh, no, we want money. So, so I suppose, you know, use the trial though, and that will help you actually, you know, get an understanding of what AI Builder does and how to show the business value around it. Now, uh, before I start more details into it, I suppose there are two ways, and that was in my prerequisite requirements. There are two ways, but you can get a OS365 developer 
uh, subscription setup, which will give you power apps, and that's what I have also, and that will give you the power apps and the AI builder trial, so you can go and use it. Or else you can go for a power apps community plant, but I think that's still restricted to, I suppose you need to have a license somewhere. It doesn't work like free. You have to pay for something, I suppose. So I don't know what is that, but I think it's still finding out and uh, you know we can look at. But if you want to just start using the, so sorry, I thought somebody was messaging on any questions. So. You can go and purchase a license and then you can start using it. So it, it's not that heavily costly. It's a part of, uh, you know, the power apps, uh, you know, the power apps, power app plans, and you can start using it after that. Cool. So now once you have got that figured out and what you are going to do, you can start with the trial at the same time. Uh, so these are the categories as I was talking about what your model can be built on. So the model is basically the business logic that Microsoft has already provided. So you got category classification, entity attraction, form processing, object detection, and prediction. So you have to just first think of what you want to use around it, and you can start with one of them. So for example, for today to start with, let's start using form processing. So if I want to create a form processing, uh, you know, system, I'll just go ahead and say it like. So today, so the scenario that I will be running, oh, wait one second, sorry. I jumped on to the second bit. Before that, I wanted to mention that there are actually pre-built uh, uh, functionality that Microsoft has already given. So what they have done is taken all these models and given a solution already on top of it. So you don't have to train anything. You don't have to do anything. You can, you can just start using it. So instead of you guys going and training and building, what Microsoft thought, there are some common scenarios which I think everybody uses. So you can just start using it in your solution. You don't have to go and train and build because that's going to be generic across all platforms. So you can start using it. So for example, today we look at business card reader to start with. So if I go to my apps, I have a business card reader, not on this one, but on the other one. I have a business card reader scanner. So that's something like I just went ahead to my power apps, AI builder, build, and I clicked on a business card reader, and that's it. And it gave me the app with the business card reader in it. So I just like started using it. So once you have it set up, what you can do is, and, and uh, obviously the card reader needs the metadata out of it. So I put that control and I had the metadata extracted out of it. Once you have put that control, you can just go and upload any card. So I'll just pick a card from one of the so I've got a one good friend in Valo. I'll pick his card. Um, I don't know if anybody knows him, but he's, I think, the Asia Pacific. Uh, so this is his card. So when I uploaded his card, I got his name, I got his job title, his website, and his phone number. Easy. So I didn't do anything. It was like 10 to 15 minutes thing. I clicked there. I got the app. I started using it. So you don't have to do a lot of work. It's just one hour maybe of your time to set it up properly, and there you go. You are ready to use it. So that's the starting point where you can use the existing available solutions out there, and you can start. And same thing with category classification. If you go there, they have already categorized some part of it, and you can say, I want to refinance my loan. So it will tell price and billing. So they have already trained. They have already uh, created the model and everything. You just need to start using it. And that's how it becomes so easy to and I will show you some part of it in uh, later in the demo for category classification and entity attraction. So that's the first bit where you can use something that is already available. The second bit is where you are actually creating something custom for your business and you have to start with a model. So for that, you pick the model first because you have to train that model. So for, as I was saying earlier, you pick a model for, for example, form processing. So I'll go back to my other account. Go to form processing, say, so today, it, for today's session, I'm considering the scenario of the feedback. So, uh, and I will be talking about it later on, but one of the link that, uh, so if, if before the before uh, the session started, Nadia mentioned that she has put a link in the chat section. If you guys have not uh, used it yet, please go ahead and use it. I'll give you five minutes, uh, you guys five minutes uh, to do it please go ahead and 
um, and we can do it now actually. So if you guys can go ahead, go to your chat window. There is a link here. And I'll put the link maybe separately. Use this link and submit your feedback. Sorry for the whole text. So if you guys can go ahead and click that link and submit the form, I will show you guys how I have used it for capturing feedbacks for today's session. So I'm going, I'm using today that Microsoft form and the data that you are going to feedback on that Microsoft form as the data for my event feedback and everything. So I can look at it now. I got five responses. So if you guys start filling it, we should have approximately how many guys are there today's call? Approximately 20 or 30 feedbacks. And that will be great to check how my AI, plat AI models are performing. So I'll give you guys five minutes if you guys can go ahead and start filling the data in that form. And there is two sections where I need some actual input from you, which is the uh, outline the use cases and feedback. And we will see how that is used later on to create some smart analysis out of it. So I know these are two mandatory fields which I have added. So if you guys can go ahead and fill the data uh, into it, that will be great. I got one response. Hopefully everybody has a you know mobile or a laptop that they can go and fill the form. Even mobile, you can do it. It's quite easy. If, uh, if anybody is joining now and they're thinking what are they looking at, we are waiting for the feedbacks to come from the chat form that I put published. So if you guys have just joined, please go click on this link, go to the form and please submit your uh, feedback. So we got five responses or six responses. Expecting more to come through. Twelve. And the smart thing is Microsoft is also coming with some AI logic here right now. So it can actually in some time <laughs> will give you analysis report on top of forms directly. So you don't have to think about building a report on top. So it will just go ahead and do it. And I'll show you guys what it is doing at the back end. It is actually putting data into my test folder of the feedback that you are giving. So it is creating a PDF file of the feedback that you guys are submitting and putting it here, which will I'll use it to test my AI model. And also at the same time, it is also analyzing the data and putting it out in a list with some gradient on what the feedback is like. Now I've not trained it a lot, so I want to test it out how well it is actually performing. And then we will see that working also in some time. Got 15, 9, 16. Suppose we got at least 10 or 15, oh, sorry, at least 15, 20 odd people. So I should get around 25. So it will not take too much time. It is just one or two minutes of your time. So Okay, we'll just go have another two minutes. Are we ready to fill up that? It's interesting to see that a lot of people are, uh, you know, thinking of using it or you're trying to use it, which is good because that actually, uh, you know, kind of sets the stage that, you know, and that's good to know that a lot of people like AI. Obviously, you are in this session, so I'm thinking that you should be liking AI, but, you know, yeah, using and liking are two different things. So that's good that you guys like AI and that that's one of the things that I will use to analyze the feedback that is getting. Now, saying that this scenario doesn't need to be in an AI system. Now, if you tell me from my earlier statement, maybe I have overkill. 
the requirement, but this seemed to be more practical of what I tried to do without actually generating or simulating some, you know, T recognition solution that Microsoft provides and telling you guys about T. Uh, I don't know, it's not even coffee, it's tea. So a lot of people will not be like, well, what is tea to do with this? So, so this is like, I'm trying to mimic a situation where you will be using a real case example or scenario where you're trying to gather real smart analysis in your power platform. So feedback is a big category in there because a lot of organizations use feedback. They actually send out forms, they give out uh, you know flyers. So one thing that I was planning to do with, which I could not get time to do, was my uh, event feedback form, which was my earlier idea. So not this one, sorry. Uh, that's it. This this is the example that I was planning to work with. So I was going to like fill them up, and I'm like I'm getting tired with filling up two of them. So I stopped it. But this is like a feedback that you will get. This is like a feedback that you will be sending out to your clients or your customers or your CSI kind of stuff or your people within your company. And you'll be gathering a lot of feedback. But how much time you spend, to be frank, how much time do we guys go and look at those feedback and really do something out of it? It's very hard because there are so much data in it, so much text. And unless you have a dedicated team for it, you'll not even spend the time of doing it. But Let's think that that situation can be now offloaded to an AI, which actually does it on the back. It actually gathers the feedback, makes smart analysis out of it, and gives you the result back in a format like a dashboard or something. And you can just look at it and say like, okay, this makes sense. Now, obviously, the Power Platform uh, a dashboard is also, so the Forms Platform dashboard is also available, but it's very analytical. If you want to put some, and you will see at some of them, like pick out keywords, put some, uh, you know, like a bubble a graph on it, uh, what do you call that, the bubble word uh, uh, map on it. And then you can see which words are more uh, ringing with your clients or with your, those all things will need data out of it. So that's where AI will become really useful. Cool, so I suppose we have got 19, which is good. So I, I suppose if you guys have not filled up, please do. But I think this is good enough for now. And we will use that. So for the session, we will go and create a form processing. And what I'm going to do is analyze the PDF. Now, you might, when you look at the PDF, you might be like, oh, Ashish is just taking it because this doesn't look like a feedback. But what I did is I actually created a lame PDF output uh, from using my flow. So just to show the scenario that if it can read, the AI can read a PDF. So basically what I'm doing is nothing but taking all the data, putting into a table, and then sending the table to a PDF. Now this is my, uh, you know, hacking way of doing it means you can have a proper PDF, but just know that you need to have proper text so that your form recognizer will work. Cool. Any questions? No? Okay. So we'll start with the form processing. What I'm going to do is even feedback. Now, the form processing, as I was saying earlier, will work if you have text data. If you don't have text data, it is going to be hard for it to recognize, so it will not. So what I'm going to do is now add the documents. Now, I can do a SharePoint thing, so I can go and click my SharePoint. Where my data is, I can go and click that, and I can go and click my document library. I can go and click test. Now, test was me to show that it is used for testing, but for now, I will just pick five of it. And hopefully that data is really relevant in there. And therefore I have to make some fees mandatory because otherwise you are not getting any data. So, so first what you do is you need to go and get your training documents, put them into a location like SharePoint or in your, in your you know, uh, OneDrive or somewhere and upload that to the model. So you add your documents. It needs at least five. So in this case I have given seven, so it will pass. But Ideally, it says that give up actually 20. So 20 means the form recognizer will be you know, smart enough to understand. So now we go to analyze. Now what it will do is it will go and read those PDF files and try to locate those sections which have inputs in it. And give those kind of boxes that you can tag and say, okay, this is what this is about. This is what that is about. Uh, and you can basically you're tagging your documents, the content in the document. So while it is doing, I will show you guys what happens at the end. If I go to my model, um, oh, 
uh, this one. Yep. So what I've done is I've taken some examples. I've put my fields. Um, this one. Okay. So the trial thing is causing an issue. Okay, so what it does is it will actually means if oh yeah now it loaded so it will give you this kind of boxes so you can click on that boxes and give it a name so for example this is my response number this is my submit time this is my responder this is my role okay so these are all the data that you guys might have provided and I took one example some of the guys actually filled it before the session which was good because then I can use that for my <laughs> session so. So you can go ahead and now this one is obviously wrong because it's selecting the whole box. I don't want that. So what I need to do is I need to go and so it has selected the whole thing. So I can just go ahead and take it out. And this one is what using Power Platform. Yeah. Uh, and this one is duration of use. This is a number which is like, do you like AI? Yeah. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just tagging the fields in that form or the feedback output that I got. Uh, so I can actually uh, use that consistently across all my, uh, all my uh, forms. So use cases, now it doesn't have feedback because you know that's the older one. Uh, this is response number, which is good. This is submit time, which is good. This is responder, which is good. This is role, which is good. So, and this whole thing is something that is not required by us. Which is fine, which if I don't tag it, that should be fine. Now, once I confirm the fields, now it will open up all the other five, and now I have to go and tag. So I can go and say, okay, this five is what? using our platform. This is duration of use. This is do you like AI? This is smart collaboration. This is these cases. Okay, so I do that for the rest of the five. And once I've done that, let's hope my other one is already there. Yeah, it's already there. So it will take time, but you know, you understand the idea. So once you have done that, you can actually go ahead and do like next, and it will go and analyze the documents, tag them, and train the model. Okay, so once you have done all of those steps, your model will be ready uh, uh, as in my case, this model, it is ready, and you can now Generally, it opens up the. Generally, uh, okay, this is weird. It is uh, should ask me to discard the changes, and uh, I should be able to say that okay, don't use this now because I've got one ready already. Oh, this is blank. Okay, uh, so this one. So once those were working, maybe because they are in progress, it is giving that error. It will show a discard button here, and you can just discard those changes because you know you don't need those. Once you have done all of that, there will be a publish button here. And you can say, okay, my training is good. I see the performance. This seems to be right. Go ahead and publish. So I have hit publish already. Therefore, I see use model. But once I hit publish, it will be available for my Power Apps and Power Automate to use it. So I'm hearing a lot of things. I'm just going to take a quick look if there were questions coming up or if this is. Done. We've got a lot of people joining in this session. This is good. Mm -hmm. uh, and suppose so guys who have been joining recently, if you have not filled up the form, please go ahead and fill up the form. 
at the end of uh, this session, or well, at the, at the later half of the session, I will show you guys some intelligent, intelligent analysis, which will be good to see. And yeah, uh, it will be helpful to see what, what's happening with the feedback that you guys are giving. So cool. Um, so, so the Steve Chef process, just to outline again, is first click the model that you want to prove. For example, form processing, open the form processing model, upload your documents, and then go and tag the fields. Okay. Once you have tagged those fields, you, you will do done. Once you have done, I'm not doing it because it just takes time and we will be out of time by then. Once you have done all of those fields, you do next and it will train the model and give you the option to actually go and publish. So you can go ahead and click one of those models. Um, I hope I had one model which I've not published. Well, I have published all of them. The other, one. the other one key thing, and this is one good thing actually, and good for you guys to know, is the trial is actually per user. So you can have multiple users turning the trial in your tenancy. It doesn't need to be restricted to the whole tenancy. When you start a trial, the trial is for that user. So you can have multiple users that are trialing different stuff. Um, so if I go to the models and the other user and I open one of them, uh, this is also done. Thing is published. So yeah, so as you guys saw that, it should give me this kind of edit and discard draft. I don't know why is it not giving me and the other one. Uh, so pretty weird there. Uh, drift model. Uh, I have not started this. Anyway, so there is a publish button. Once you click publish, that will be used. So it will say publish here. Otherwise, the status will be trained. Okay, so none of them are trained, therefore. So if I, the status had been trained, once you open these and you say, say publish, it will go and uh, sorry, I click clicking on the wrong one. Uh, you go and say publish, and then publish will let it be used by Power Apps or Power Automate. So once you have done the model, you are ready to use in the Power Apps. Then you go ahead and create an app. So what we will do is okay. So I'll show you guys how it will look like. So this is my power app, which has those two parts. So uh, yeah, okay. So this one is basically the initial one which I was trying to do, where I didn't have those text and the uh, the object detection analysis done. So I was just taking the forms and uploading it, and I was trying it. So I got the PDF output out of it. I saved it at a location. I put it into my uh, model. I trained it, and then I went ahead and started analyzing it. So I put the control and we'll see how to be done, but I put the control in Power Apps. I click select the document that I want to analyze and I expect the data to be extracted. So what it is doing is reading that PDF file and as you guys can see, it's actually putting probability. So what everything about AI is probability. So it's all about probability and statistics around what it is you know, getting as a data. So it gets the data out of it by tagging those locations and trains. So Great that it could tag, tag that location 100%, so it knows. But when I was trying to extract the data, it was giving me both the text. It was not highlighting me thinking about it. It was like, I want thinking about it. I don't want the whole thing. I want not yet, but soon, not the whole thing. So because this is the image kind of thing, because it's an object, it's not only text, it doesn't work. It will work well if you just have text in it. So this one comes out fine. That one comes out fine but not the other bit. So I can cut the role, cut the required information, the business idea and response number. I don't know why it is wrong and the duration, but I cannot get the uh, the uh, controls out of it. So this is the first case where, you know, you go ahead and use that in Power Apps and you actually select the file that you want to analyze and it will just, so for example, if you are in finance and you get a lot of receipts, you can create a AI kind of a, Kind of a model which will actually be good at, and that's what one of the Microsoft example is that to extract invoice data. So you can just upload the invoices into it, and it will extract the company name, the amount of expense, the date, the invoice number, and all those stuff. So this is one of the examples where I use real 
feedback form, PDF outputs of it, and use it to train my model and worked. Now, to show you really, because that one didn't work, the other option is, um, go back here. The other option is actually di like differentiating the data. So as I was showing you guys, one data is the PDF file that I generated because I read all the form output and created the PDF file out of it. So it, it was uh, good. Come on. Every time it's like, oh, this is my new account. I never tried it on this one. Okay, that's fine. Try to try. Ask it again. Not happy the first time. Just want to make sure I want to. Okay. So what I did is I broke the output into two parts. One was the text, which was getting from my feedback. So the feedback text was actually uh, what I was getting. And then what I did is I took the PDF output for the control and train on one particular part of it, which I will show you guys. So analyze text data is where I'm analyzing the text output. So the PDF files that are generated from the form uh, responses that you guys just submitted. So we'll just go and pick up one of those responses. So what I've done is I've synced one of the SharePoint libraries where the data is stored after my flow runs. And I'm going to pick one of the files from there and then we'll analyze that data. So I'm just randomly picking. And it has actually analyzed the feedback that it has gotten from it and it is going to show me the feedback here. Now you will tell me like why I need to do that. Now this one is obviously a simulated, you know, case where actually you are, um, you know, kind of, uh, kind of analyzing data which has been processed by a API. But for example, if you are working with the survey feedback form which gives you PDF files as output, you can still use it and take the text out of it. So I analyze one. The response over here, the person was a CEO, which is good. So he can just make the decision after the session. Let his team go and build some AI. That would be a good use case and really beneficial for the session. I'd love to do that. So hopefully whoever is here, please, after this session, um, you know, tell your team to start building one. So are you using Power Platform? No, which is sad. You are new, which is good. You're smart collaboration. You are considering it. And use cases are developer events. This is one real use case scenario. You can actually do it and be one to present on it also. So that's good. Um, so the next one is, let's pick another one. UVM engineer. Now, you know what? I can do this with forms also. I can go and do this and I can go and scroll. I can do view results. I can go, and this is what I've done. I've printed all this output into, you know, so I can go to 15 UVM engineer. No, okay, I can look at it. Yeah, fine, I can look. But if I want to extract that into a one simple uh, one location and want to give it to somebody to the user, that's where this thing will really become beneficial. Where I can just say give a form. They don't need to see the nitty gritty of the form and the PDF output and everything. They can just upload the form somewhere and it will give me the response. So it is 15. So you an engineer. He has not been using. He likes AI, which is really good. Uh, he is doing it now. Uh, use cases invoices. So this is. Obviously, the case that you guys want that you might use in it, this is what you what you are looking at. So this is this is go ahead and do it. So invoices, this is what your invoice will look like. You will upload it here, and it will go and analyze it. Uh, let's pick another one. Now I obviously use this data to train my model. Ideally, you would not use real case data unless it is quite uh, valid. So it has all the values filled in. Uh, for example, you had all optional fields in the feedback and people will not fill up three of the answers. Then this, then this thing will not work while training because in training you need those data to be filled. So try to get examples which are completely filled before you train uh, because that will give the AI all the aspects that it's looking for. Now, Aiting, he's a chief bottle washer. That's a good role, uh, but you know, but, okay. You, you love technology if you start using it. Um, so you can, you started using Power Platform, which is good. There are some really good use cases of Power Platform across business scenarios, so you can start. And yes, you can use it for that. Yep, 
uh, and you can do some smart prediction analysis. You can do predictions actually, like how much bottles you are going to get, how how what's your rate, is it going to be enough for your whole week or not? So th those kind of analysis can be done through AI. That is a prediction analysis model which can do that. So cool. We have looked at some of the analysis data, and then we look at one more before we jumped into Power Apps and see how it is done. Now. Obviously, as I was saying, there was a problem with this controls, right? So I cannot take the data out of the control and show it. So do you like AI? That one was not processing well in the earlier example. Not in the one with the text, but one without the text. So what I have done is I have actually take the location directly. So kind of nested and I keep forgetting. So if I go there. Ah, uh, no. I need to get my images. So obviously for my thing, because I have PDF output, I have to use a software to convert that to images. So that object detection only works at images. So you need an image as the output. So as I showed you that form processing works with PDF, the image processing or the object detection works only with images. So you have to have an image output. now. I don't know why Microsoft is not bringing the cross page together and they seem to be similar cases, uh, but you know something they should do. Uh, so I go ahead and select the same output form. And now in this case, because I'm doing image processing and I'm using the same controls and my metadata was like positive because it's more than three, negative if it's less than three and neutral because you know it's three. So what it does is actually because it's the same control with variance, it gives you a probabilistic output. Now, I could what I could do is take the higher probabilistic output, and that's my result set, and that's what I'm looking at. But the lower probabilistic output is good for training. So now I know this one is actually, uh, if I look at it, it's basically I think it's uh, neutral. It is three, oh, no, not neutral. Sorry, it is. Uh, yeah, it's neutral. So it is neutral. So it is three, but it is giving me two. But when I look at it, it's saying neutral on using AI. Let's detect another one, which is a five. So I can actually show you guys before I pick. So this was a three. So let's pick 15. 15 is a five. So we'll pick 15. And it should say it is, yeah, like, yes, there you go, 100% match. Because, you know, five, there is no variance around it. So 100% match. Yes, I like AI. Yeah. Let's pick another one. Let's pick a two. There is a two, uh, three, four, one. Minimize. Three, four, one. And that's a two. And no, I don't like AI. Now, the only variance comes when there are two possible matches with nearby variance because two and a three is not a big change. So the AI doesn't know which ones it is looking for, but what it does is higher confidence for. Uh, no and neutral. For this, I had to train about 36 documents. So it only took me the whole afternoon to create the sample data and train it because I had to create 36 variances because it needs at least 15 for each combination. Oh no, 36. I created 55. Sorry. So I created 55 documents because it needs 15 for each. So 45 at least. And I gave it a little bit more. And once I trained it, it started understanding. So for that, what we are going to do is actually creating. So I'll show you guys the. Model for that. So yeah, there you go. This one opens up fine. I just, yeah, I know it is unrealistic. Let's just do. Connect. Oh, Forty-seven images. Yeah. So I defined, so what you do is you actually define your parameters. So if I had all those controls, the permutation of it, like four values or so four values. So you have to determine all the values that you're looking for. It's not like form processing, which will take out the text and do something with it. So you have to actually tag the real data with it. So for me, one and two were no, three, four and five was yes, and three was neutral. So I created three. And then what I did is I opened all those 47 images. I used from SharePoint and my device. And I tagged those images with the metadata value. So if I open one of them, I said, yes, this one is neutral because there is a three on the back of it. 
this one is also neutral because there is a three at the back of it. So I go ahead and tag those locations and actually, uh, I don't know why I didn't have tagging now. I think I just skipped it. Yeah, then I can drag. So there is a three. So I selected that location and I said neutral. Selected that location again and I said it is no, I don't like it. So basically, I had to train. Um, so that it will understand what needs to be done. And once I have trained, I can do next and it will go and do the scenario and then train. And once I train, it will just, after it has trained, it will, if I go back to my screen now, it will show the filters as training. In that case, it will say training, it is training. And then once it is done training, you will see the publish option and then you can publish. So this is in the nutshell, how you go about Building, oh sorry, we didn't see the Power Apps part. My bad. Um, so if I go to the apps, if I do a new app, Canvas. So we saw the model, we saw the training, we saw all those bits. Now if I have to create an app out of it, so what I do, I new one. And it's going to be very simple actually. Create a new app. And if you go to insert, there is this AI builder. And you can say form processor, object data type. You click form processor, I will add the control there, got it. And then it will go, you, give you all the trained or published ones, sorry, all the published models, and you can pick and choose. I can pick one of them. And then basically, when I go and put a control here, if I put a control here and I say form processor one, so form processor. Go and rename this, for example. I can say even design. Go back to your control. So this is all power apps now. So you can say even feedback dot results because that's what you are looking for. It's always in a the value that you're looking for. Example duration that's based on your trained data dot value. So whatever you tag there, dot value is what your value will be like. And once you put there, that's what it will throw up when you are wrong. Um, so for example, if I run this and pick one of those. Replies. takes a little bit of time because it's actually extracting the PDF data out of it. And then it will show that duration here. So, so there you go, duration 201. So you put the control, you first train the model, uh, you publish the model, you come to Power App, create an app, go and build an AI, put the form processor in there and give the formula and that's it. Straightforward. Cool, now I just realized I actually spent a whole hour on this. Okay, there's just there's so much stuff in it. Um, so I will give you guys one minute to ask any questions before I jump on to the Power Automate bit. Any questions, any thoughts? Uh, you can put it in the chat or... Others, uh, made, you get access to Power Apps by subscribing either to the dev subscription or through your organizations if you go to office.com uh, and you go to all apps you should have power apps in there uh, right yes there you go power apps you can log into office 365 if you have office 365 subscription or you go for a developer license or community plan so it should be in the prerequisite email yep anybody else questions Good. Um, well, I'll give guys, you know, 15 minutes after the session and you guys can ask more. So cool. So we come to the Power Automate. Now Power Automate is nothing but a backend logic that runs and does the work, right? So in Power Automate, the scenario is slightly different. What you do is you're basically sending the data to Power Automate and let it analyze. Now, as I was telling you guys, you guys gave me those, uh, you know, feedback, and this is what I generated out of it. So what I'm doing is I'm actually analyzing the form responses, sending it to, sending it 
uh, through a uh, through a power automate uh, AI analyzer uh, flow, which will analyze the data that it, whatever you guys have said, it analyzes the data, the scenarios and thoughts and challenges, and gives me a sentiment of how happy, good, and what can you think? What are you thinking based on the feedback? So it, see, this is like it can be good, so good, high sentiment. I've not used it yet, so that means like you know, you are still thinking about it. So it gives a rating also like neutral, positive, positive, neutral. No, hardly a negative. Sorry, this one actually my. I don't know why it is all neutral because it should be negative. This one should be negative. So this one, therefore, I put the score in there because this one is coming from the AI, the you know the out of the box AI classification, which is not doing a good job it seems. So. Yeah, some of those ratings are wrong. Uh, so automating my business processes, no, I find faster way. Yeah, these are all my examples. Payroll. Okay, because it didn't understand what the sentiment is for. I suppose there is no. I do like this reason size of fish. Hmm, this is a good use case. Yeah, yeah, this is actually object detection use case. Yeah, that's that's a good use case for it. So it gives me like fish photos, specialized size. There's not much of a feedback. I'm understanding this, so it's 0 0.5. So, okay, so at the part of it, what I've done is I have actually sent all the thoughts and challenges you put. I have put my own classification model on it. So basically what you have said, I want to know if you want to improve, you want to learn, or you want to adopt. So based on the responses, we host a science fiction, uh, first game development, just getting started. So there is this case of improvement, and this could be a lawn situation also. So that's fine. The algorithms are still limited. So there is an improvement. So this is a fit. So the algorithms are still limited. Actually, it fits my criteria of improvement. So, so to train that model, what I did is I actually created a dummy kind of a classification Excel. So what I did is I created a scenario of like what people will generally say as improvement or adoption or something. I sent it through my model of training. So you have to use common data service to train your Power App. Once I have trained it, the text that you guys are sending it is actually getting classified automatically into this category. So Microsoft has this um, you know, category classification that they have, but I created my own classification based on some 50 generated odd statements and putting a category there. And whatever feedbacks you are giving, I'm going, I'm, I'm putting that into a kind of a category. Now this one could be like, actually this one could be improvement or something else. Uh, learn, I'm just starting with this, just looking at it now, learn, Power Platform is great, so adoption, still using Power Platform adoption, uh, improvement, seems like potential cash, but still considering, yes, there you go, learn. Uh, so yeah, so, so the, what it does is basically goes and analyze those inputs that I have got takes out the key entities out of it. So in some cases it could not take out entities because it didn't understand anything out of it. And if but this is the out of the box one, so it doesn't match. I suppose. So you have to create a custom model around it. And these key phrases are coming from uh, like the text analysis. So it's understanding what data is in there and what makes sense. And this just puts into an array. So there is obviously no comma, and that's why it is coming bottle washing one word. It is bottle comma washing. So there is something I have to fix in my Power App. A power flow, uh, data, comma invoices, comma report, interpretation. So instead of me reading the whole text, consider that it's a paragraph. Instead of me reading the whole text, I can look at the key phrases that I'm really concentrated and I can create a bubble, a word map kind of thing where uh, I can see which ones are people looking for. Um, so yeah, so this is what I did in the Power Apps AI backend. So what I did, and I'll show you guys, go to my flows. And I go to my analysis AI. So there are a bunch of stuff that I've did in it. Uh, so basically what I've done is initially I got the forms data, stored it into a variable, but then I use the AI builder. Now this needs licensing and you need to have trial license for that. I pass the data that the form output was into one of these values and extract the data out of it. So it will come here, I get the results and I get the key phrase. That's it. I didn't have to do anything because this is all trained by Microsoft already. I didn't have to do anything. I just actually went ahead and start using the data. 
the other one where I was categorizing it, I actually did like my model, which was my model survey feedback. So if I go here, uh, go to my power platform now, this one doesn't go up anytime. Uh, if I go to my AI builder models, I have a survey feedback model, which I showed you that Excel and I trained it. I went ahead and provided that model into my uh, automate as the AI model, and then I pass the value into it, and it automatically gives me the data out. And then I'm storing it in a SharePoint list based on what so the global positive is the sentiment analysis. So there is a sentiment analysis here. So they have used two sentiment analysis model. One is the uh, the created model from Microsoft, and then there is an AI service that you can directly use. So there are two ways, either you can create a custom model, and Microsoft has one model that you can directly use, which is said predict sentiment analysis model, or you can directly call the SaaS offering, and then you can, so there are, so if you click on here, and you need to enable the AI trial for this, and you get this AI builder, and you have a bunch of actions that you can choose from. You can count objects from images also, but it will count just generic objects. So you will not know which one it is looking for. So you need to create a custom model then. But once you create a custom model and you put it there, it's as simple as selecting that AI model and providing the data, and that's it. It will do the work for you. So this is how you will use AI in your flow or Power Automate, where you can put the AI builder action and then it will give you the output that you can analyze. Um, the final bit is Power Virtual Agent. Uh, now, if you go to uh, the Power Apps, there is a chat and bot feature, and you can click Create. So I have one already created, not in this one. Dashboard is create. I have already one created. I have this Power Virtual Agent, which is like the out of the box one I've not done. What I've done is I've added, so in Power Virtual Agent, everything is a topic. So you define the topics that you are going to work on. So product offer, I want to buy something. And once you create a topic, you provide the keywords that user are going to provide. So you can say order app. So this one is a product uh, checkout or product e-commerce flow. And what I did is I added a step for checkout. So if I come to my Power App and I say checkout as a command, or I say finalize my order. Now this doesn't go through Lewis or anything. So it just, you know, takes that command and does it. So you have to be very smart on what you are trying to give it. So you say finalize an order and then it will say, yes, check out. Uh, so, you, so there you go, it gives you option if it doesn't understand and it's, so I had hard-coded data in it, so just two desktops, one laptop keyboard. I want to proceed to checkout. What it does is it actually posts a link. It gets, it sends an email to the procurement team. I get the email, my Outlook, about that order. Plus also I get a message out in Teams. So this is like a product order scenario. So uh, supposedly you had a team who does the procurement and they have a teams and the email so you can send them a formal email saying that the product has been ordered so your order is confirmed you know these are the order cost value so it sends and you can go and click and get more details or it puts a message out in your team's channel about so how did i do that is i've created this uh, trigger phase or this uh, topic called checkout and then i did um, sorry I go to the authoring canvas. So the authoring canvas is like a switching logic. So you can switch based on like, you know, order details, get that order number, purchase, customer. Uh, these are the details. So, and then based on if they come from yes, I'm going to put it in a power automate. There is a power automate order processing flow. So once you are in power PVA, it will give you an option to create a flow out of it. And once you create the flow, you can get the data out of Power Virtual Agent, provide the inputs, and just do the other stuff as you normally would. You just put the data and then you can return value back to the, you know, the Power Virtual Agent. 
So if I go back to my Power Virtual Agent, uh, yeah, saying it's just order process, but I had H logic somewhere. So yeah, I'm getting the confirmation. I'm not using it, but I, once I get the confirmation text, I can do something with it. So I can just put a plus button. I can call an action, which will be Power Automate Flow. So create a flow and then basically provide the parameters and it will do the work for you. So cool. So this is all the different things that you can do from Power Platform. So Power Apps, which could be app based on a model, uh, image training and everything. Then you have Power Plat Power Automate, which can do kind of a analysis on the data that is provided through different sources like text or anything. And then Power Virtual Agent, which is like a conversational interface for you guys to converse on and ask questions. Oh, sorry, do a bot kind of conversational feeling. So you can just go back and forth. Cool. Um, like I've gone nine over a minute, but any questions? You can feel free to um, jump off and use uh, your audio as well if you have any questions for Ashish. Uh, suppose um, I'll do the final sliders if you guys are thinking about questions. Uh, it's been good and you guys could get what you were looking for, but if I just go to my, I just got um, two final bits about security. So if you are interested in security, Power Platform gives environment permissions, data connector policies, and there is AI builder roles that can be applied to prevent security as part of it. So it's not unsecure. Like a lot of times my client asked like, can I do securely this AI stuff? Yes, you can. So there is authentication and security on built on top of the solution. Uh, these are some of the helpful resources. This slide deck will be on my blog site. Uh, my blog site, I think if you guys, uh, or it is on my next slide. Um, blog site is uh, ashitpari.com. Uh, you guys can link me on Twitter or LinkedIn, but um, if you go to my blog, there is a uh, location for helpful resources. So if I... I've also added the link in the chat as well for anyone who's interested. Great. So if you go to presentations, there are all the presentations that I've been doing. There are a bunch of virtual assistant ones. Oh, shit, I didn't upload this one yet. Okay, so I'll upload that. But the, the Power Apps and the, uh, the Power Platform, uh, this will be there. And this, uh, I think the session uh, video also will be shared from Nadia, so it will be available for you guys. But if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out on these links. Okay. So that's all from my end. Unless you guys have any questions, I think uh, that's all from my end. Okay, thanks everyone for joining today then. Thank you, Ashish, and thank you to everyone for joining today's session. We will upload the video to our YouTube channel, and I will also pop the link into the Meetup page so you'll be able to access it as well. Um, Ashish and I will probably hang around for another minute or so, so if you do have a last-minute question, feel free to jump in. But if not, we will see you next time. Thank you.